So the next problem for chapter 6 is number 64, and it's involving the formula for, del uh, for Q, which I like to abbreviate Q equals MCAT. So if you haven't seen my acronym for that, it's just Q equals, and these pens are struck on here. Okay. Q equals M C delta T, which kind of looks like an A, so we're going to call that MCAT. And that's just my acronym for that. So this problem is involving a 32.5 gram iron rod that is initially at 22.7 degrees Celsius and is submerged into an unknown mass of water that is at 63.2 degrees Celsius. So what is the, and then the final temperature of the uh, mixture at equilibrium is 59.5. So we want to know the mass of the water that the rod was put into. So this important concept that is governing this problem is like energy transfer and thermal transfer. So there's a iron rod and there's water. So the heat transferred from the rod is going into the water. So we have to make the comparison that Q of the rod, so we can call it either iron or the rod, I'm just going to abbreviate it as iron. Q of iron equals the negative Q of what water will do. So if Q released heat, water has to absorb heat, or vice versa. So we just have to remember that they're in same in magnitude, just different in um, signs. So the first thing we're going to solve it is what the information we have. So we know that the iron rod, we have M, we have C, we can look that up in a table, and we have delta T, which is going to be, the, both of them have a final temperature of 59.5. And so we have a delta T. So we're going to start with the iron rod. So Q of the iron rod is going to be mass of the iron rod times the specific heat of iron times the delta T of their temperature change. So our mass, we know, is 32.5 grams. The specific heat, if you look it up in, your, in the table in your book, you're going to find that it is really small, um, relatively small, 4.449. Um, and the units are joules per gram Celsius. It's important to note this is grams. I know a lot of you in SI were asking if we need to change it to kilograms, and I told you we need to match what the specific heat value is in the table. And then we also need our delta T, which is usually right, like we said, final minus initial. So our final is 59.5 degrees Celsius minus 22.7 degrees Celsius. So that is how we're going to find Q of iron. And when we solve that all out, we notice, look, by the way, cancel, cancel the C's, and we're left with joules. Q usually should be in joules. And that magnitude is, and with the sign, which is going to be positive, because delta T is positive, it is a positive, it's a big number, 537.004 joules. And I left a little extra sig figs, but just for right now. We should, I think we're going to have three sig figs at the end. So that is Q of iron. Now, remember what we said. We said Q of iron is the negative Q of water. So we can substitute a negative, and the Q of water is going to be the same formula, right? Q is always MCAT. So we need to figure out how to get Q of water. So we're going to use this equation, and we know that Q of iron is going to be negative Q of water. And so that can be replaced with positive 537 joules is going to equal a negative Q of water, which is going to be M of water, which is what we're looking for, C of water times delta T of water. And now we have, lucky for us, one equation, one unknown. So we can solve it from this equation. So we're going to rearrange, well, let's flush plug in. So we're going to leave the 537 joules. And what is our mass of water is what we're looking for. What is our specific heat of water? It's good to remember this number. It's 4.18 joules per gram Celsius. It's good to remember water, 4.18. It's in the table as well. And our delta T is going to be, what did delta T this one start at? 63.2 is our initial, so our final 
is 59.5 minus 63.2 is our initials, degrees Celsius. So once again, the units cancel, and this is going to be in grams. And so we're left with joules and joules on both sides, so it cancels. So we're good to go. So now we rearrange and solve for M of water, and we get approximately 34.7 grams of water. Now, it's good, remember, you can double check this, because the negative portion, this portion right here is going to be negative itself. And remember, mass has to be positive. So this is a negative number. Negative times a negative is going to equal our positive mass. If we had gotten a negative mass, we would need to recheck our work because mass, as we know, has to be positive. So once again, make this connection. Q of one equals the Q of the other of what is being transferred. They just are going to have opposite signs by definition, right? Whatever got absorbed or released is going to be the opposite in the other um, part of the system.